Hello there, everyone! Welcome to episode number 539 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry. Brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. This week, my guest is Peter Hartwell from TDK, and we're talking all about TDK's new ultrasonic vision platform called SmartSonic, the details of their MEMS-based robotics platform called Smart Robotics, the challenges that their Smart Motion UHP sensor is looking to solve, and what their scalable digital microphones called Smart Sound are. Are all about. Also this week, I check out a new inexpensive, biodegradable, 3D printed sensor that changes color when it's heated or stretched. But first, let's bring in Peter from TDK and talk all things smart. Hi, Peter. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, thank you. Absolutely. Okay, so TDK released a whole lot of super cool stuff at CES this year, and sadly, I wasn't able to attend, but I would love to talk about each of your smart products, smart sonic, smart robotics, smart motion, and smart sound. So, Peter, let's start with smart sonic first. This is an ultrasonic vision platform, right? What kind of benefits does this solution bring to the table? And what kind of applications are you looking at for this ultrasonic vision platform? Vision is an interesting word to put in there because, yeah, it really gives you the ability to detect objects and things at a distance using sound waves. So it's an ultrasonic transducer. It sends out a pulse of ultrasonic energy, and then it looks at the reflection, how long it takes for that to come back. And so, you know, those little bumper sensors on the bumper of your car. And so when you're trying to park your car and then beep, 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 as you get closer, it's just like that. Except what we've been able to do is miniaturize that technology in a place where you can put it into uh, things that are consumer electronic type devices. So we can put it into a vacuum cleaner and we can detect obstacles, you know, those robotic vacuum cleaners and look for things you might try to run into. It can actually then look at the floor and based on the reflections we're seeing from the floor, we can tell if it's carpet or we can tell if it's a smooth floor. And so you can make a decision, you know, how you're gonna clean that floor, right? just based on that that energy that's coming back on that that ultrasonic it is a single pixel so vision is a, a little bit i don't want to say an exaggeration because what we're comparing it to is things that you would have typically done with an optical sensor and that's where the ultrasound has got this unique advantage of we can actually see if you will objects that are transparent like glass and so if you were using a, sometimes people use lasers to do this range finding or people use infrared sensors to measure obstacles or look for obstacles and those will go right through a transparent thing and so for us as long as it's solid it can even be mesh it can be fabric like i said um you'll get that signal back so it really opens up this space of, of what you can do to as you're trying to move around or understand things are moving around relative to you. Coolest part though, is it's really low power. And so now you can begin to put this into applications because of its size, because of its power. It wasn't really capable to do these kinds of things before. So it opens up a whole new space of the way things are interacting with the world around you. Excellent. Now, I was also really intrigued by your smart robotics platform, which is a MEMS-based robotics platform. So tell me more about smart robotics. And you guys have some development kits for smart robotics, right? We do, exactly. We call it RoboKit, and it's available. You can look it up and find it online. And what it is, it's a board where we've taken literally a dozen of TDK sensors and put them on this board and wrapped it around a microcontroller to make it real easy for people who are doing robotics to integrate a suite of sensors into their platform. We want to make sure that the getting the sensors hooked up and getting that data from it, that's not the barrier to you being able to do really cool user applications with your robotics platform. Um, we've got a host of systems supported with it. ROS drivers are available, a number of other platforms to make it really easy to integrate into your project and start looking at what you can do with sensors. 
So what we did at CES for kind of a fun demo is uh, we took an AMR, autonomous mobile robot that we'd worked on with one of our partners. We mounted a RoboKit board on top of that, and we used it to measure how the robot was tilting as it was moving over obstacles in the booth. And what we had on top of that was a platform, put a martini glass on top. And the idea was the robot could drive over the obstacles in the booth without spilling the martini. Something we were able to mock up literally in just a few weeks because the RoboKit and our smart robotics makes it so easy for you to sort of add those sensors, add a new application on top of an existing platform and really, really show some cool stuff that get customers really excited about the possibilities of what sensors can do to really augment the capabilities of robots. I love it. Now, you guys also released the Smart Motion UHP. So what kind of benefits are you seeing with this sensor family? And what kind of challenges were you looking to solve with the Smart Motion UHP? So the Smart Motion UHP features our very new design on our gyroscope, the latest and a long family of gyroscopes that we built. But this one is what we call it's fully balanced. And that has to do with how the, the little elements of the gyroscope are vibrating inside so that they are not creating any vibrations that are being transferred externally into the system. As consumer electronic devices get smaller and smaller, more integrated, things are pushed closer together. You run into situations where the various systems in a device like a mobile phone can actually interact with each other in ways that impact the performance. And so the gyroscope inside, we've got pieces that are moving around that creates vibrations. Those vibrations can couple into other parts of the system and can actually, like I said, impact performance. The opposite is also true. So the way to think about this is if I've got vibrating moving elements in my gyroscope and you've got your audio on, you're on speaker phone, there's playing music in, in a mobile device, we got a lot of sound coming out. Those vibrations can actually go back in and impact the gyro performance. But with our new balanced architecture, um, those vibrations are canceled out actually at the hardware level. So it's not something we have to compensate for. So think about you're gaming with your mobile phone, you're, you're moving it around, the gyro is measuring those motions. And what we're able to do now is ensure that as you're listening to those sound effects cranking out there, bugging all those people on the bus, that that's not actually impacting your gameplay. Excellent. Now, finally, let's talk about Smart Sound, your new series of scalable digital microphones. Now, this family also includes analog MEMS microphones and digital as well. It, all did you release in terms of Smart Sound solutions at CES? So at CES for Smart Sound, our big release was the new T5838, T5837 family of digital microphones. So these microphones have a PDM interface on them. They are the lowest power digital microphones available that also have really high performance. We're talking 68 dBs of SNR, 133 dBs of acoustic overload point, AOP. These are the two main specs that you care about in microphones. But the 5838 also has on board an acoustic activity detector. And for only 20 microamps more power, we can actually make sure that around you, what you're hearing is their sound, and then you can use that to smartly turn on the rest of the system. So these microphones, as you said, are scalable. They've got multiple modes, power modes, where it gets down to some really ultra low power modes. You know, we're lo looking at 100 microamps or a baseline. And this allows you for those, those applications where you're trying to build an IoT device, maybe you're putting a camera and one of those battery powered security cameras, um, things like that, where you, you need to have that always on low power. Really, this AAD adds a bunch of features to really move that space to a whole new level. So we also released the Smart Sound One eval board, which to try to make it again easier for people to integrate microphones into the system that they're developing at that development stage to make that integration easy. That supports analog and digital microphones up to two and allows you to really play with a lot of these advanced features that we're building there in a in sort of a really nice sandbox to make it easy. And then you can go decide, hey, the product that works best for your device do the integration and go out and build some boards. So again, it's smart for us is not just delivering that final solution, but let's make it really easy for you to get in, demo some stuff, try some things out, um, focus on your application and not the integration challenges.
Excellent. Well, before I let you go, Peter, it is time for your off the cuff question. Now, since you haven't been on my show before, you get the standard off the cuff. So, Peter, if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there or the restaurant is closed, what would you have? All right. So you're asking restaurant, not food, right? Like where, where uh, either we? way, you have food or restaurant, up to you. There is a pizza place in downtown Milan that's it's unlike anything else you've ever been to in the world. Uh, it's called Marutella. Whenever you go there, you, you just everything is, of course, handmade. In Italy, you've got to eat the whole pie, right? There's none of this. It's, it's a fork and a knife kind of deal. Everybody at the table gets their own, so you get exactly the toppings you want. And they got this spicy red oil that you pour all over the pizza on the top before you eat it. So forget those hot chili flakes. It takes it to a whole nother level. Super thin Italian crust, perfect cheese sauce. It's the best pizza in the world. I love it. Sounds delicious. Awesome. Well, Peter, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. All right. Thank you so much. Enjoy it. Well, this team from EMPA was able to accomplish this by adding a small amount of cellulose nanofibers to the mixture and then was able to 3D print this material without affecting structural coloring or the electrical conductivity. And they even created a couple sample applications, including a strain sensor that changes color in response to mechanical deformation and a simple seven segment display. Xavier AB, co-author of this study, says this about this development. Our lab has already developed different disposable electronic components based on cellulose, such as batteries and sensors. This is the first time that we were able to develop a cellulose-based display. In the future, this kind of technology could be a great fit for a whole lot of different applications, including biomedical diagnostics and food quality control. Dr. Gustav Nystrom, head of the Cellulose and Wood Materials Lab at EMPA, says this about the future of this technology. Sustainable materials that can be 3D printed are of great interest, especially for applications in biodegradable electronics and the Internet of Things. There are still many open questions about how structural coloring is generated and how it changes with different additives and environmental conditions. Super cool, right? So if you want even more information about this study, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com and in the description for this week's YouTube episode as well, including a video of it in action. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal Twitter account, check out Amelia D 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, sure, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we have that YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me. And you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. And remember, if you'd like to further support this podcast, please leave me a review on that podcasting platform of your choice. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or, heck, you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of July 7th, 2023, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.